We are blessed here at Christ Church uh, for faith in Jesus Christ and an assurance of his presence with us and his victory over sin and death. Praise God. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Let us pray. Lord, open our minds and hearts to the miracle of your presence and power, what you did with Lazarus, what you did with your own cross and empty tomb. May new life, may an awakening happen in our hearts and minds today in worship, we pray. Amen. Our scripture today is from John chapter 11. Uh, Listen for God's word to us today. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. And then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. The laws of nature never seem to stop Jesus from accomplishing the tasks that our Heavenly Father placed before him. Water doesn't normally just turn into wine, especially really, really good wine. And a sick child close to death with fever doesn't normally suddenly get well at the same time a word of healing is spoken by someone who is miles away. Someone who can't walk for 38 years doesn't normally suddenly regain strength and control of their legs with the spoken words, get up, pick up your mat, and go home. A crowd of 5,000 men plus women and children can't normally be fed with five loaves of bread and two fish and then have more leftovers than when you started with. Someone cannot normally walk on the surface of a lake and even have a conversation while doing so. A man born blind normally doesn't gain sight for the first time when following the directions of a traveling holy man. But with Jesus Christ, the power and glory of God behind the miracles or signs, which is the preferred term in John's gospel, had begun to convince the people that in Jesus, accomplishing impossible things was fast becoming normal. And these six signs coming before our reading today in the raising of Lazarus, the seventh sign, raised the belief and expectations for who Jesus was, what he could do, But did any dare to believe that a man who had been dead in a tomb for four days could be healed and raised to life again? 
Lazarus lived in Bethany, a town that was fairly close to Jerusalem in the southern part of Israel. Jesus and the disciples, when visiting the temple in Jerusalem, would often go to Bethany to stay with their friends. They were hospitable followers of Jesus. They knew each other well. And in verses 3, 5, and 36 of this chapter, it references love, a real love between Jesus and this family of two sisters and a brother. When Lazarus died, it cast a shadow of sadness and grief all across this community and even among their Jewish friends from Jerusalem who had come out to mourn with them. This was day four in a week-long community experience of expressing grief and comforting the family in loss. If only Jesus, the miracle maker and teacher, had been there, he wouldn't have died. But then it was four days later. Following the promptings of the Father, Jesus had deliberately chosen not to immediately respond to the news of Lazarus' sickness with immediately coming to see and heal. He had a particular purpose in mind. In John 11, back a few verses, it says, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not result in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. And after he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. The deeper purposes at work here was people coming to believe in Jesus the Lord's Messiah and to give glory to God and God's Son. Belief or believe occurs many times in the Gospel of John. It means to believe, to have faith, to have confidence in, to rely or depend on. And in John, it's a crucial step in being saved by God through faith in Christ. We can't say from the way the scriptures read here that God or Jesus caused Lazarus' sickness and death, but we can see with great intention This setting is being used by God to help people move towards saving faith in Jesus Christ and to give glory to God and God's power. The bleakness of a community in grief over the passing of a beloved family member and friend was the setting in which the seventh and greatest of signs, aside from the resurrection of Jesus Christ, in the Gospel of John. It was to show that even death... Even death after being dead for four days was not beyond the power of God to heal and to save. You ever think that something was just too big for God to do in your life? Problems too big or too late to be reversed? They did, and this was it. This was the irreversible, painful loss of four days dead. But Jesus, the Son, who lived and prayed through the power of God. Martha was among the first to greet him when he arrived. In John eleven eighteen, 18, it says, Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had 
come to Mary and Martha to comfort them in the loss of their brother. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. In her sadness, Martha seemed comforted in Jesus' presence and expresses faith in him and what he could do had he been there, and faith in a general resurrection from the dead at a future time. As often happens in time of loss, people think more and more deeply about their theology and faith and interpretation of God's word for their circumstances. But in those days, the common belief that the spirit of a person who died only remained near the body for three days and then gave up and departed because of the state of the body, this was a strong thought not only in Martha's mind, but everyone else in the community as well. Martha's later objection to Jesus' command to remove the entrance stone of Lazarus's tomb because of the stench of the body on the fourth day would lead us to believe that like many others in Bethany that day, Martha was taking comfort in the promise of the resurrection of those who die in the faith in the last day, as well as the comforting presence of Jesus, her Lord, with her this is the precise time in which one of the great confessions and I am statements of the gospel of John comes. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Jesus' words here, as well as the miracle that was soon to come, offered hints about what was to come afterwards with him. After Jesus' death and resurrection, his followers would look back on these words one day and say, remember what Jesus said? Remember what Jesus did? He was pointing to the greatest sign, his own greater miraculous resurrection from the dead that would make possible the general resurrection that Martha had spoken about earlier and about which the Pharisees and Sadducees debated among themselves. Here, Jesus Christ clearly affirms belief in him personally, as well as in the resurrection of the dead through faith and belief in him and God's power. Raising a man from the dead here is meant to draw our attention there, to belief in God's Messiah and faith to give glory to God in God's Son, in our circumstances. Remember the words of Jesus' prayer right before Jesus, right, right before Lazarus was raised? Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus' prayer beforehand humbly showed that it was the power of God and not his own by which this miracle happened through prayer. And like so many of Jesus' miracles, there was a deeper teaching being communicated here that Jesus was God's Messiah and God's power that is even greater than death was moving through him in his prayer to bring about resurrection into new life. The people were too stuck in their grief and loss to see it at the time, but many times God is at work in ways that we don't see and we don't anticipate and we don't always have that 
belief in God's power over things that are commonly regarded as impossible. Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out, his hands and his feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Out of this bleak atmosphere and overall mood of death, Jesus the Son spoke a word of life in the miraculous healing and resuscitation of Lazarus that no one ever thought possible, in fact, happened and stunned a community with the good news that their brother and friend Lazarus was not dead, but he was alive. In commanding Lazarus' grave clothes to, remove, to be removed, Jesus used the word luo, uh, which means to loosen. In seminary, this was the example verb used in Greek class to figure out all of the variations of verb tenses in first, second, third person, singular, and plural. We learned how to say, I loosened, they will loosen, we are loosening, you have been loosening, and many other ways that are reflected on this chart. And I remember wondering, if you could pick one word in New Testament Greek to teach all of these different ways and forms, why would you pick this one word to loosen? But I later discovered this is a really, really good word. It's not only because it's the word of command that Jesus uses here to free Lazarus from those grave clothes that bound him after being raised from the dead, but because of other scriptures as well. In 1 John 3, 8, it's translated destroy in the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. In Revelation 1.5, it is translated freed in to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood. In Luke chapter 13, verse 16, it's also translated free in then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? Friends, this is the word we are claiming for this sermon series starting today and for two more Sundays, Life Unbound. And we're claiming it for this time of being in a pandemic and by God's grace emerging from this culture of death and gloom with faith in Christ. We may not be out of it yet and still have to act responsibly and respectfully towards others during it. But when we stop, when we just stop and think and pray, we realize that Christ is with us. And because of his cross and empty tomb, we have already the promise of salvation through faith and the resurrection of the body. The resurrection of Lazarus points us to the empty tomb of Jesus where the victory that is shareable with all of us was declared with power through the empty tomb and faith in Christ. It's the empty tomb of Jesus where we too can be unbound and set free as Peter and the other disciples were later to discover in John 20, verse 5, he bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight in the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. You see where Lazarus was healed, and resuscitated, Jesus was resurrected. Where Lazarus needed others to help remove these grave clothes, Jesus had a resurrection body that nothing could hold back and even appeared and disappeared in a room the disciples were later to gather in. 
the grave clothes of Jesus were just laying there where they were left, such that when the disciple whom Jesus loved looked in and saw it, he believed. Where Lazarus's healing was temporary, as all healings are, and would later die and be buried again, the Lord Jesus was resurrected in power, never to die again. And such is the promise to all who have faith in him and choose to follow him, even though hardships come and often stay a while. Even though we may not always receive the answers to our prayers that we really, really want, this victory and assurance is always ours. And nothing, no evil, not death, not suffering, not disappointment, not depression, not a culture of death can take that from us. Because of Jesus and his resurrection, we can choose to live in gratitude for the good that Christ has given to us and is presently working out in us and among us. Because of Jesus and his resurrection, we can live with hope that this is not all there is, that death is not the end, but a transition into experiencing the love of God and the glory of God in a different and more complete way. Because of Jesus and his resurrection, we can live in prayer and in faith, knowing as Jesus did, that the presence and power of God is available to us too, to call upon and to live into and to glorify him in our life situations. With Jesus for us, it is life unbound. He has the power to loosen, to set free, to break strongholds of sin and death in our lives. The word is luo. Like with Lazarus, his word over us is let him go, let her go, let them go together. And so, friends, the promise of the resurrection and the power of the resurrection and life in Christ is here with us, before us. Let's go. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the resurrection life that you not only promise us, but you offer us here and now to live in, to dwell in by faith. Lord, with resurrection power, stir our hearts and our minds to live in faithfulness to you in this community of faith where you are raising new life out of a culture of death. You are giving hope in this mood of sadness that has been with us for so long now. We pray, Lord Jesus, you move us individually and as a community with expectant faith, with hope in you, and with eyes of faith that see the light of Christ that is yet shining in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. May it be so, we pray in the name of Christ. Amen.